Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. We got something very unique today. This is the Lion Cooler X40A by Echo Power. It is the world's first battery operated refrigerator that can be charged by solar. You got that right. This has interchangeable lithium ion batteries that could be charged with the included solar panel. So this is completely off-grid, completely wireless. You don't have to plug it into your car, you have to plug it into the wall, you have to worry about plugging it into a solar generator. It's completely self-sufficient. It also has a Bluetooth app that you can use on your phone to completely control the refrigerator remotely. It has a handle to help move it around and some pretty big wheels, which you can roll it around off-road. A nice strong lid and some pretty cool controls on it. But is this just a bunch of gimmicks or is this actually any good? Let's find out. So what comes in the box? Quite a lot. Of course you have the manual, which we'll go over. This is an MC4 cable, a pretty long one that allows you to put the solar panel, which is an optional add-on to this. It has an MC4 connector on it. And you can run the solar panel out pretty far, about 10, 12 feet. To the refrigerator and you can also get an optional extra battery for it this refrigerator model that i got came with two batteries this comes with a pretty long core 12 volt cigarette lighter so you can plug this into your vehicle and charge it while you drive it also comes with an ac adapter so you can plug this directly into the wall or shore power or a generator whatever you desire and it also comes with a direct battery charger so you can plug this into any ac source and then plug this into the battery and charge the battery that way so that way you don't have to use solar you don't have to have the battery in the refrigerator to charge it if you have multiple batteries like i do you can use that to charge your spare battery while the other one's in use let's take a look at the included manual now this does not come with a generic compressor this has an lg brand high efficiency dc compressor it actually cools very quickly it tells you that the batteries are 173 watt hours each now it does claim four hour charge time from any source for these batteries and we're going to put that to the test with the solar panel this of course has high medium and low setting just like pretty much any other compressor fridge which allows you to change the voltages at which it will cut off and if you're interested in the weight it is 13 and a half kilograms which is somewhere around 30 pounds so an empty fridge when you take the battery out it's actually very lightweight it, it's not heavy at all you can see i'm not struggling at all to pick it up this is one of the lightest compressor fridges i've actually dealt with especially for the size let's go ahead and plug the battery in and i'll show you some of the specifics so how you turn it on as you make sure you see these little posts are down and that's the downside of the battery right here this little black thing put it in push it all the way in. you have to squeeze these push it in till it clicks turn on the power by holding the button down you hear it beep you see this only has two four lights charged up because i was doing some testing with this battery then up here you hold down the power button and the display comes on showing you the current temperature current state of the battery how many bars of the battery the voltage eco mode bluetooth and the battery level low medium and high all in one place there's a little better close-up of the display now on this side of the refrigerator is the direct 12 24 volt plug where you plug your cable in this is the pv or solar port you cannot use both at the same time let me repeat you cannot use both at the same time it has to be one or the other it has these molded handles for picking it up you can't take them off they're there permanently now this door is impressively well sealed it's very tight it doesn't rattle it doesn't move at all and it's completely silent so when you're driving you're not going to hear this thing banging around they got this weird sort of silicon material on the top i guess this is to place your phone or something so it won't slide off that's what i'm guessing this is for but the latch is pretty nice you can see it's got a rubber seal that goes all the way around and inside you have a little white led light that turns on when you open the door now unlike a lot of other 12 volt refrigerators this does not have a separate dairy compartment instead you go way down in here and put stuff way down in here underneath the battery and compressor part because the battery and compressor is all up in this section notice it does actually have a drain plug so if something blows up in here or you somehow get some melting ice or something like that you can just pull the drain plug out and drain it out the bottom without having to flip the refrigerator over thor what are you doing are you out here catching more ground squirrels? Are you being bad? Yeah, those innocent looks. You're so innocent. My ass. 
This side of the fridge has nothing special. You can see the wheels on the sides, which are filthy because I've been dragging it around out here. On the back, you have the vent for the compressor. You have the extendable handle. You just have to press this down and it slides all the way up. And you also have these tie downs. So you can actually tie this down in the back of a vehicle so it doesn't go anywhere. And here's a closer look of the filthy wheels on this thing. They're, they're you know, they're plasticky, but they actually have like a rubber coating. And they work pretty well on this terrain. I had no problem dragging it up and down the driveway. So let's talk a little bit more about the solar panel. Now this is a very basic solar panel. There's, there's not a lot going on here. It does have three panels, 30 watts each for 90 watts total. It is of a little bit of a dated design. It does have the, the legs that you can put down, which are Velcro. This only has an MC4 connector on it, but that cable, as you can see, they give you a lot of cable. That's, I tell you what, Lion Cooler, this was pretty cool seeing you guys actually give people a lot of cable because a lot of times you'll get like that much out of a solar panel and then it's up to you to go out and buy a big long extension cable. And yes, you can put multiple solar panels together. This will actually handle up to 50 volts of solar input. So you can put two of these panels in series or pretty much any other 12 volt panel in series. Now. You don't have to use their solar panel. The thing is, when you get it with the package, it's an all right deal. And plus, if you just wanna just buy it all in one place and get it done with, that's also a great option because you can get the extra battery and the solar panel all in one order, all shipped together, all from one place. If you already have a solar panel with an MC4 connector on it that's at least 90 watts, it will work perfectly fine with this refrigerator. Now note, there are several different ways to charge these batteries. First way is directly with the AC adapter that has the little 5.5 millimeter barrel plug on it. Plug that in, plug it into the wall. You do have to turn the battery on to charge it. The other way to charge the battery is to put it in the refrigerator and then you can plug in one of several options. Say you wanna charge from your car or you wanna charge from a 12 volt jackery. You just plug it into the 12, 24 volt input. Yes, this works on 24 volts and then plug this into your car or a power station. Method number two for charging a battery. You got the AC wall outlet with the brick. You plug that right in and it will charge the battery while it runs the fridge at the same time. So anytime you have anything plugged in here, it charges the battery simultaneously. Third and final option is the solar cable. So you can go ahead and plug this into the solar panel and the MC4 connectors. And then this side goes right into the PV. Again, you can't do both at the same time. Don't try it. It says it'll actually damage the refrigerator. But this you can plug into a solar array up to 50 volts and charge the battery while the refrigerator is running at the same time. So those are all the major features of the Lion Cooler. Of course, I took it upstairs into my secret laboratory and performed several experiments. Let's see how those went. We're now gonna test how long it takes for the Lion Cooler to go from room temperature, which is about 76 degrees here, to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna measure how long it takes and how much power it takes. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the same test down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna see additionally how much longer it takes and how much power it takes. So here's the beginning of the test. We're starting at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. We are in max mode. As you can see, we are pulling about 66, 67 watts in max mode. And we're off. This is the test from room temperature to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna show you guys the solar freezer app. This is the app that you can install that will connect to the refrigerator. And there you go. You can see in real time the voltage of the battery, the temperature of the refrigerator. You can set it to max or eco mode. You can change the voltage. By default, set the low nine volts. And what I mean by set the voltage, this is the cutoff voltage if you're running off of a battery. So besides the battery that's built in, you actually want to pretty much all the time leave it on 9.0 volts if you're running it off of a solar generator. But if you're running it out of your vehicle, you probably want to set it to 12 volts so you don't kill your starter. You can change Celsius to Fahrenheit. And down here is the actual set temperature of the fridge. As you can see, I have it set to 32 degrees. Advanced lets you change some of the other parameters. And that's it. It's pretty simple. You can turn on and off the refrigerator remotely. You can turn on and off the Bluetooth remotely. That means if you're driving and your refrigerator is in the back and you wanted to change any parameters or see what kind of temperature it's running, 
there you go. Here we go, a very impressive 21 minutes to get down to 31 degrees Fahrenheit. So I timed it from the time that we started to the time the compressor shut off and it goes down like one or two extra degrees before the compressor stops. But 21 minutes, almost 22 minutes, that's very impressive. And let's see how much power it actually took. So it only took 1.4 amp hours or 18 watt hours, wow. That's almost no power at all to cool this thing down to freezing. Okay, that's impressive results. Now let's go ahead and turn this to zero degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna leave it on max mode. We're gonna restart the timer. We're not gonna erase our results for the amount of power it's used so far. We're gonna do a cumulative test that would go from approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how much additional time it takes. Remember, this refrigerator is empty. This is simulating plugging it in, before you go camping or whatever, you're plugging it in after it's been sitting for a while. How much power does it take? How long does it take? So let's just go ahead and use the app. Let's just go ahead and move this down to zero degrees. There we go. And we'll start restart the clock. And we'll see how long it takes to get down to zero degrees. And here we have the results. Just under one hour to go from room temperature to zero degrees Fahrenheit. You can see on this side, we have zero degrees Fahrenheit showing there. And let's see how much power it took. Three amp hours or 37 watt hours. Now that's total to go from 80 degrees Fahrenheit to zero degrees. Less than an hour to go from 80 degrees to zero degrees. Now that's a record. I've never seen any other refrigerator cool down so quickly. The compressor in this is pretty loud and it does sound like it's working pretty hard and it does pull 70 watts on max mode. But all these things combined makes this thing very powerful and cools down very quickly and actually doesn't use a lot of power doing it. Now for this next test of the Lion Cooler, we're gonna test the sound levels. So we're gonna show how many decibels the compressor produces while it's running in eco mode and in max mode. So we have the refrigerator one meter away or three feet away from the noisiest part of the refrigerator. So in eco mode, when the compressor's running, it's showing about 30 decibels. Let's go ahead and crank it up to max mode and see if it's any louder. I do have the refrigerator now in max mode. It is slightly louder. It's more of a higher pitch tone instead of volume wise, you'll see. Yeah, I'll put my microphone closer to the outlet and give you an idea of what the sound is like. So it's kind of high pitched. It's got like a fan sound, like a computer fan sound. It sounds like a computer that is gaming or doing some kind of video processing. It's, you know, it's, it's running kind of loud. That's one of the downsides to this refrigerator being so powerful. It is a lot more noisy than that JP40 that I tested, which was virtually silent in comparison to this. All right, we're now gonna go ahead and test the Lion Cooler and see how much power it consumes over a 12 hour period at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside, we have it filled to the brim with 28 bottles of water. We have the battery turned off, so it's running exclusively on external power, which is being supplied by a Jackery 300. We're gonna go ahead and monitor this for 12 hours, and then we're gonna double those results to see how many watt hours this takes over a 24 hour period to keep a full refrigerator at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go, we got the Jackery 300. We're doing pass through charging on this. We're charging it with AC power and using the 12 volts on the Jackery to power the fridge. Now the reason why I'm doing this is that we have random power outages. I'm just using the Jackery pass through charging. So even if the power goes out, this won't get reset. And there we go, there's our starting temperature, 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and let it run for 12 hours. And yeah, that's a lot of water. It's the next day, we're back. I'm having my 12 o'clock coffee. If you're interested in an Odin Command You coffee cup, they're available on the website, don't forget. We're back with the results for the 12 hours running the Echo Power Lion Cooler. Now, I need to make a note that when I filmed the display, I still had it on max. I realized that after the fact, switched to the Eco. So the test has been run 12 hours on Eco mode, not max mode. 
The power draw right now is 45 watts on eco mode. You can hear the compressor is running. So let's see how much power it used. So here are the results for 12 hours of runtime, 8.3 amp hours, 101 watt hours. So 202 watt hours for a 24 hour period. 202 watt hours for a 24 hour period is not bad at all. Now the ambient temperature in this room is 76 degrees and it's been maintaining that temperature pretty much day and night so that's a test at room temperature 202 watt hours that's impressive that means that this actually has some pretty decent insulation and a pretty decent compressor now clean my litter box now the next test is going to be to take all the water out of here put it back in the other refrigerator Fill this up with frozen food from the deep freezer. Stick this sucker on zero degrees Fahrenheit. Let it catch up and do its thing. And then we're gonna measure it for 12 hours in freezer mode and see how much power it uses. So there you go. We're set at zero degrees and it's in eco mode. So we're calibrated at zero degrees. We're gonna go ahead and reset the meter and we're gonna let this run 24 hours because it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I am not waking up at four o'clock tonight to do the measurement. So we're just gonna go ahead and come back tomorrow and do an actual 24 hours on the freezer. We are back. It has been 24 hours. So let's see how much power it's used in actual 24 hour periods. We have 29 amp hours. 362 watt hours. So what I'm gonna do next, since I have two batteries for this thing, which are fully charged, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the jackery so it'll no longer run off of the 12 volt jackery output. And I'm gonna run it off of one of these batteries in freezer mode. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use my tablet here as a stopwatch. We'll stick a battery in, put the freezer completely on battery and see how many hours it will run. Now remember, it's already at zero degrees or in this case two degrees so it's just going to maintain the temperature this is going to basically assume that you've plugged this in at home and you've got it to the temperature you want to get it to you put your food in and now you're ready for your trip so we're going to find out exactly how many hours these will run in freezer mode now the manual says one thing but i'm betting that this little battery probably won't do what they say but ah uh, you never know Let's go ahead and try it. We'll go ahead and turn the battery on. You'll see it's got four lights. Ah, ah, four lights. So at this point, the Lion Cooler is running entirely off its own internal battery. So let's go ahead and start the stopwatch. And we're going to see how many hours it takes before the sucker shuts down. Day four. So the Lion Cooler batteries are 173 watt hours. It ran in freezer mode for 11 hours. I actually caught it right after it died. So it was almost exactly 11 hours to run at zero degrees Fahrenheit on one of these batteries. That's pretty good. And for this test, I have another fresh battery. I'm going to go ahead and install it right now. And we're setting the temperature to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This is set on eco. We have a refrigerator full of refrigerated water. So we know it'll run 11 hours in freezer mode how long will it run in refrigerator mode? It should be longer. Now, this is obviously gonna take overnight. So I'm just gonna put my camera on it and I'll see you guys tomorrow with the results. Tomorrow. Welcome back. This is, I think the fourth day of testing this refrigerator. I think I'm finally done. So what we did in this last test is we put one of the fully charged batteries in the line cooler. We set it to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We filled it with water, bottled water that was already around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I let it run for three hours before I started this test. So I let it run for three hours so that everything inside was 32 degrees. So that way we'd have an accurate test. I started this timer yesterday and it's now lapsed 16 hours and we still have two lights of the four lights on the battery and up on the display, it's showing two of five bars. So if you extrapolate this data, that means this refrigerator should run at 32 degrees if it's full of stuff that's at 32 degrees for a full 24 hours on one battery. These batteries are 173 watt hours. So that's actually pretty impressive. You can see there after 16 hours, we still have two of the five bars left on the battery and it's the battery is running at 10.9 volts. I think it goes all the way down to nine volts when it's empty. 
and it's been holding 32 to 34 degrees the entire time. Now one of the most interesting features about the Lion Cooler is the fact it comes bundled with a solar panel, a 90 watt solar panel. And that solar panel has MC4 connectors, and then they give you this nice long extension cord, which is MC4 to what looks like five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, that's probably what that is. So we got a little bit of sun today, it's not perfect. But we're gonna throw this out here for four hours and see how much that battery can charge in four hours of sun. So the charging procedure is as follows. You take the solar plug, you put it into the PV port. You come over here, turn the battery on. Now the battery's fully discharged, but since it's plugged in the solar, it's gonna think it's time to turn the refrigerator on. And in that case, if it does, which we'll go ahead and turn it on. So you hear the fans start to run. That means it thinks it should power the refrigerator. We don't want it to do this. I want full solar going into the battery. Now, apparently you can run this off of solar directly with the battery in there like we're doing right now, because that battery's dead. But it does say 10.3 volts, which is just enough to keep the compressor going. So what we're gonna do is power the refrigerator off. You can hold down this gear for a few seconds and you can see the battery charging there. It says error one, because we have it shut off, but you can see it's actually being charged. You can see that little battery icon showing that we are charging from solar right now. 10.7 volts is what the battery's sitting at. We are back, it's been about four and a half hours, as you can see. The sun's now behind the trees, so we gave the battery four and a half hours of charge on this 90 watt solar panel that comes with the package with the line cooler. Let's see how much battery charge we got. All right, to see the state of charge, we just hold down a little gear icon for a few seconds. So it is showing five bars or full charge, which it's really not fully charged. It's only showing 12.1 volts, but it's pretty close. Just to verify, I see four lights. So that's not too bad. Four and a half hours of mediocre sun. I say mediocre because we do have haze. There is some smoke coming in here from the fires in California. So. When you look on the horizon, you can actually see a little bit of brown, and the sky itself, even directly overhead, isn't perfectly blue. You can tell there's like a little bit of haze in the sky. So it's not perfect conditions, but four and a half hours got that battery almost completely charged. I'm gonna have to guess about five, five and a half hours would fully top that battery up. And as you saw, it lasted a pretty long time, even in freezer mode. You helping me out? You helping me test the Lion Cooler? Because you're a little baby lion. I just saw him swat a, wa a big wasp. He just like went up to it and s just slapped it, just bitch slapped it. It was hilarious. He's a little killer. So what do I like best about the lion cooler? Well, the obvious is that it's completely off grid. You don't need to plug it into any other power source except the one it comes with. And these batteries, they last a really long time. I was really shocked to see 24 hour refrigerator runtime off of one of these batteries. So that means if you got two of these batteries, you could run an entire weekend without even having to hook up the solar panel or a jackery or plug it in your car, your house or anything like that. And one of the other features I really liked was that when you pull the power out and the battery's on, it seamlessly takes over. That means you could use this for disaster preparedness. You can leave this plugged in in your house 24-7, 365, full of meat. Say you wanna use this as a deep freezer for emergency prep. You can fill this thing all the way to the brim with meat, put it at minus four degrees Fahrenheit, plug it into the wall and forget about it. If the power goes out, you know you got at least 11 hours runtime in freezer mode off of one battery. So if the power goes out a lot in your area like it does here, this might save your butt when it comes to your frozen foods. And of course you could use it in refrigerator mode and get a whole 24 hours off of one battery. That's really impressive. Now what don't I like about the line cooler? This thing with all the options gets quite expensive. Solar panel and batteries, everything combined, you're getting close to a thousand bucks. However, we do have a discount code for you. So look below in the description. You can get a discount code for the Lion Cooler and it includes all the different packages, solar panel, extra batteries and stuff. We'll get you a code. It should knock some money off on this. Now you do have to remember that this is fully self-sufficient. So you don't have to spend three, four or $500 on a solar generator to power this. You also don't have to worry about running down your vehicle battery, which could leave you stranded. Now this would be very excellent on a long road trip. You throw this in the back of your car or truck, 
you strap it down, you put a battery in it, and you forget about it because you know it's going to last a long time. And if you get a spare battery, you can charge one battery while the other one's running the fridge. It's actually really cool. And that Bluetooth app, while I usually don't like unnecessary apps because it is optional, does allow you to set every parameter on the fridge from the driver's seat. So you can check and see how, what's the status of the battery, what's the temperature, you can change the temperature. Uh, all that can be done remotely within Bluetooth range, which is usually around 15 to 20 feet. I do think it's actually worth the premium. One other thing I didn't like about this fridge is that it is louder than other refrigerators for the most part. Now, I don't mean louder in decibels. I mean the sound that it makes seems to be more annoying than other refrigerators. Now, I really got spoiled with that Iceco JP40 because that thing is whisper quiet with its Danfoss compressor. It's so quiet you can barely hear it running. Now this thing I had on the other side of the room and every time the compressor kicked on, it's like clunk, buzz, and then you hear like the fan noise. And it does quiet down, especially in eco mode. However, I do think they could have put better fans in here that run at a lower rate. I think it's the fans that's making all the noise and not really the compressor. So if you're interested in one of the Lion coolers, the link is in the description below. Don't forget to look for that promo code that's down there as well. This will take you to the page where you can put in the code, get the discount. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Whoa. What you guys doing? Now I see why he ran up the tree. Yeah, I know, you're smart, man. I tell you what, and look at those eyes. Yeah, he's, look at that. He ran up there instantly knowing that there were dogs coming. Now these dogs do look friendly. They're wagging their tails. However, I don't like people's dogs randomly running onto my property. So we're gonna have to scare them off. I was wondering why the cat tore up the tree, then I saw a rabbit. A rabbit just burned through here. And I'm like, why is the cat not chasing the rabbit? Not realizing there were dogs right behind me. RV Golf Guy, Z Fox Fighter, Jack Smith.